All right, this video is going to just be a mini lesson on the complex number system. Um, we kind of talk about this a little bit in college algebra, but we don't really talk about graphing or kind of where Euler created this complex number system. So we are going to need to have solutions where we have imaginary um, terms in our quadratics. And so we need to kind of figure out, well, what the heck do we do with that? So let's just start basic here. If I wanted to figure out the distance between four and negative two, I might like draw this on a number line, if you will. Here's negative four, here's two. And I know that the length between those two would be like six units, right? Now, if I wanted to go into the full coordinate plane and I wanted to know what's the distance between negative two, three, and four, negative five, well, then I could use the distance formula or I could use the Pythagorean theorem in order to figure out what that distance is. It turns out my x values here, again, have a distance of six. My y values have a distance of eight. And so my hypotenuse of that right triangle would be 10. Um, or we could, again, use the distance formula and do the difference of my x's squared, the difference of my y's squared, and then take the square root of that. And we end up getting the square root of 36 plus 64, which is the square root of 100, which is 10. We now need to talk about how complex numbers work. Complex numbers are of the form a plus bi. So all complex numbers are going to be of this form a plus bi. And how we are going to end up graphing this is your a goes on your real axis or your x axis and your y goes on or your imaginary numbers go on your y axis, your b axis. And then we can find this length, again, using the distance formula or the Pythagorean theorem for any imaginary number in the coordinate plane. So you can kind of figure out the vector dis distance, if you will, or the distance between that number and the x X, or the origin, I should say, and the origin. So here's another example. If I have these two imaginary numbers, so negative four and then negative nine i, three and then negative three i, could I figure out the distance between them? Well, you can use the distance formula the same way we did with x and y in order to find that. And so notice there's some notes here that I've gathered on how you would be able to do that. So you can just take a squared plus b squared and find that z vector. Or if you wanted to find the distance between these two points, here's an example of how to do that. All right, so why do we do all of those things? Because of the unit circle. So Euler's formula at its basis takes the complex numbers and makes a relationship between trig and complex exponential functions. So if you want to find the exponential of an imaginary number in front of your x, you could then draw that vector, okay, and then that component here, you could then say like that's your x, and so this would be cosine of x and sine of x, so some trig here, um, and this is the relationship then between those two. You don't need to memorize this, this is just kind of an explanation of where it all comes from. So as long as you can recall in this formula that cosine was your x values and trig, for the unit circle and sine which are y values for trig. That's the big connection that we're going to want to make here. 
Now I'm noticing in this next part, there's a quite a few typos, um, but all that I want you to make the connection of is we have the real axis, we have the imaginary axis, you have some E to that imaginary number that you're trying to figure out, and we can use signs and cosines in order to do so. Um, it is also true that if I have E to the negative IX, that we can then just plug in negative, negative, because we have even and odd functions. Um, and so we end up getting this instead. Where this is all going is if you see that next piece, if you have this kind of setup, then we end up getting cos two cosine x and two i sine x. And if we end up getting solutions of our second order differential equation, where we get functions that have imaginary exponential pieces, so e to an imaginary number for one or either of these um, pieces. Now, if you do have an imaginary number, you always have a complex conjugate pair. Um, so if you have one, you are always going to have the complex conjugate pair there. Um, and in this problem, it says like, we're just gonna let C1 and C2 be positive one for the first one and negative one, because they can be anything, because it has to be true for all of them. Then with some algebra tricks, what we end up getting when this is all said and done, and you can look up some proofs, but this is what I need us to know. If you have e to imaginary number, e to its complex conjugate imaginary number, then it is true that you can write that solution with only real values where you put alpha with your e to the ax and you put beta inside with your sine and cosine piece. So if you were to have this one right here, you could rewrite this as a different c1 e to the 2x cosine 3x c2e to the 2x sine 3x. And just because of Euler's numbers and because of how the imaginary system works in like a five minute explanation that was not very thorough, but just kind of gets us here, this is a solution that takes imaginary exponential pieces and makes it so that it's all in the real coordinate plane. All right, let's look at this one here. Notice here's my complex pair for one and then a complex pair for another. So I'm going to say this is equal to C1. Um, there is, if you have alpha plus beta I, right? There is no alpha here. So E to the zero X cosine, and it looks like beta is one. C2 E to the zero X sine of X. Same alpha and beta over here, right? We have zero plus i, or zero plus one i. So C3, keep that x there. That like x can kind of factor out if you want to, and then it pulls back in. C4x, e to the zero x sine x. Now, anything to the zero does end up going away. So we could simplify this to be C1 cosine X plus C2 sine X plus C3 X cosine X plus C4 X sine X. 